Building up your range of motion has definitely gotten a lot of attention lately, due in large part to my good friend and industry thought leader, Ben Patrick. Your exercises have 100% made my knee stronger. Well, 100%. The Knees Over Toes guy took the Pollockin statement, strength is gained in the range that is trained, and put it on the mainstream map. All over the world, people are using these concepts to build healthier bodies, overcome pain, and get their functional bodies back. But what if you wanna build muscle? What if you wanna get jacked and strong? What if you wanna lose body fat and lean out? Should we be following these same principles of training? If you aren't trying to be a baller, dunking into their 40s, or someone trying to get out of knee pain, do these principles apply? The short answer is yes. Today, I'm gonna to show you how it's done. Let's dive into how to apply these principles and fit them nicely into a muscle and strength building session. Along the way, we'll get many, if not all, of the same benefits. Now, there are two important science-backed points that should be addressed first. Number one, weight training is as effective as stretching to increase flexibility. Two, training through a full range of motion results in more overall strength than the partial range of motion, more strength gained at all ranges of the joint, additional muscle growth as compared to partial range of motion work. So does that mean that you can just follow these movements with light or no weight and expect to build a jacked physique? Certainly not. The principles of getting strong and building muscle have to be layered on top. Remember, nutrition is key. Protein and calories need to be adequate to build muscle and achieve your desired level of body fat. And lastly, effort. You have to work at levels of effort near your personal maximums in order to make progress. Now the final point on effort presents a very difficult problem. As people push themselves harder and harder in the gym, there's a tendency to start to cheat on their range of motion. Look, we are stronger at mid ranges and it can be easy to think we are getting stronger by simply shortening range of motion on an exercise. Additionally, our brains are smart. They know when we're at end range of motion of a joint and that this is typically the weakest position of our body. To protect us from hurting ourselves, we have a system that will shut down where our brain allows our body to go so that we don't push ourselves into unsafe territory. It's challenging to get the right levels of effort to get stronger and build muscle while staying committed and getting a full range of motion. Two key things that help us honor the long is strong full range concept. The first is quality, movement quality. Movement quality has to be prioritized even in a strength and muscle building program. Great techniques should always be talked about, even in the context of bodybuilding style training too. Two, exercise selection. Exercises that give you the best chance for maximizing the range of a joint should be and have a prominent place in your training program. On this final point, Ben has always done an outstanding job on both of these points. I believe that is why his system has had so many success stories. He's one of the best movers that I've ever seen, and even years after he has developed world-class knees and strength and athleticism, he continues to chase perfect technique. Furthermore, Ben has always gravitated towards a more condensed list of exercises that he has found to be highly effective for training joints through a full range of motion. There's still place in training for other movements, that train shorter ranges of motion purposefully. You can overload particular muscles and strengthen positions of movement intentionally. Just about every exercise in the gym can be executed with this mentality of long is strong. Take the leg press as an example. Even this movement, I can train by bottoming out and getting the most out of my hip range of motion. So without further ado, Let's see how we bring this concept into a pump training session. We got started today with a hot start. This is a leg pre-fatigue, and it was focused on strengthening the calves, ankles, and feet. We began with a seated calf raise for 10 to 15 reps, making sure to pause for one second at the bottom of each repetition, right into a heavy 20 meter sled push. In between supersets, we took about 90 seconds to two minutes rest. We did that four times. 
Now, some important notes about this are that we were pausing at the bottom of the calf raise. This is an area where you have the opportunity to get a deep stretch in the muscle and strengthen the end range of motion. This is a place to expand your mobility in your ankles. Too many people will bounce out of the bottom of their calf raise and use too much of the stretch shortening quality of the muscle to overcome that bottom position and never really see any length change. The second coaching point is that during the sled push, you can see that when you push heavy against a sled, you end up adopting a knee over toe position in your legs. Driving through a knee over toe position in the sled push is a great way to complement the calf raises and build strength and length through the back of the ankle and in the feet. Next, we moved on to part two. This is long and strong hamstrings. Here is the dedicated and principal strength movement of our session. Every two minutes for five sets, we were completing Romanian deadlifts, aiming for eight to 10 reps on each set with slow lowering eccentrics. We did this in three different ways because three different athletes have three different body types and three different skill levels and strength levels. You see the dumbbell variation, which is a great place for people to start to get comfortable with the movement and have more control over where the weights are relative to their body. It can feel more comfortable on the shoulders and can also be less intimidating. Then you see the barbell variation with feet on the floor. This is great when you're starting to get ready to start loading heavier. And finally, the deficit variation. Once you wanna graduate your range of motion, you can step up onto a box or to a plate, and this can allow you to get further range of motion at the hip as you're hinging forward. Now, a quick note about effort here. We had a single exercise with precise rest periods every two minutes starting a new set. The goal was to use the first two sets to help establish the range of motion standard, make sure that we were hitting some physical cue that let us know we were at the same range on every rep. Then as we built up heavier on the final three sets, we had to maintain that same position on the first set. I was touching the barbell to the floor on every repetition, so I would be sure that even at my heavier sets, I was still maintaining range of motion and not cheating my reps or cheating my range of motion just for the sake of putting more weight on the bar. Next up, part three of training. Flex and extend the knee. This is a time under tension superset. We had three sets with approximately 60 to 90 seconds rest between exercises, starting with the ATG split squat for 10 to 12 reps per leg, then moving into the Nordic hamstring curl for 10 to 12 reps. We bounced back and forth between these two exercises until three sets of each were completed. Now the ATG split squat is being done in three different ways. The first is the hand supported method. This is where you have one hand holding onto a squat rack or a bench to support the body into an optimal position and to cut down on coordination and stability needs. The second was with the heel lifted by a wedge on the front foot. The heel wedge variation can help to get into deeper knee flexion positions on the front leg, helping to overcome any ankle restrictions that an athlete might have. Lastly, you see one being done without hand support with me wearing weightlifting shoes. This puts me in a great position to be stable, to have a little bit of a heel lift on the forward foot, but now I'm having to balance a bit more side to side because I'm not holding on to a rig. For the Nordic hamstring curl, we've got unassisted and assisted variations. Using a band is a great way to support yourself through this very challenging range of motion and exercise. In both cases, whether it be assisted or unassisted, the goal is to ensure that you're getting the full range at the knee when you're doing the hamstring curl. Training both sides of a joint with a superset is a complementary method. This means that the muscles of each movement aren't impacting the other directly. This means that we can fit more work into a shorter amount of time and the intensity is going to build from the compounding effort on both exercises done back to back in this superset format. Next up, part four of training, flex and extend the hip with functional pump conditioning. The final 15 minutes of conditioning was set up in an EMOM format. That stands for every minute on the minute. There were three stations 
And every rotating minute, we would switch to a new exercise. On the first minute, we were performing either reverse squats or weighted knee tucks. This was our hip flexion exercise. 10 to 12 reps of either a reverse squat, which is me lying on the floor with cables attached to my feet, or hanging from the pull-up bar, pulling a dumbbell to their chest with their knees being tucked up. The second station was a cyclist squat with a dumbbell or kettlebell in the goblet position. This was our hip extension exercise. There were 10 to 12 reps performed in this exercise as well. And then finally, the third station was the breathing station. This could be a row or a run or any cardio tool you have access to. We used the calorie metric on the machine to help guide us and we went for anywhere between nine to 12 calories within the minute. Now an EMOM format like this should work as follows. You start the work at the top of the minute and it takes you roughly 25 to 35 seconds to complete all the repetitions that you have on your workout. That gives you approximately 30 seconds to rest before the next station. You pack a lot of work in to a short amount of time. You're still honoring great positions and you're getting some metabolic stress from the cardio work that you're mixing in. Now, because we're doing strength work alongside metabolic work with the conditioning, the total loads that we're gonna be lifting will be less than if we had more rest and we weren't doing it with cardio at the same time. But the metabolic stress imposes a different type of intensity on the muscles and on the joints and on our conditioning. It begs the question, can you work your joints through a full range of motion while under fatigue? Building work capacity can include these same types of movements and concepts right alongside all that breathing work. Part five, the end of training, isometric strength, AKA end range stretching. We move through two main stretches, the couch stretch on each leg for two minutes and the toe sit or the toe stretch for two minutes. So where does stretching fit in? Well, if strength training is as effective as stretching, if not more effective than stretching, then what's the point of actually doing these stretches? Well, it's important to understand that active stretching is more similar to strength training than passive stretching. In both of these stretches, we were hitting ranges of motion that allowed us to have full contractile control of the muscles around the joint. In the couch stretch, I could squeeze my butt, flex my quad, drive my foot into the wall, and all around perform a big isometric contraction in this stretched position. Isometric strength at end range is going to teach my brain that this is a safe position as compared to when I'm simply just hanging out passively in these positions with no muscle control. So I hope you walk away from today's video knowing that strength through range is valuable no matter what your goal is with training. This is how we do it in Persist, in our pump program specifically, to build muscle and to help people develop the bodies that they love and that look good and move well. If you wanna check out more of what we're offering, get into our free trial of Persist Pump where we do this every single day. Click the description below and go and get your two week trial today.